Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Re, and I have a handmade candle business called Green Valley Made. This is Mocha, who is probably going to be with me in the whole video because there's nowhere else for her to sit because I have all of my supplies around here that I'm gonna show in this video. But basically, if you're new, I make videos on the behind the scenes of running my business and making candles, I do studio vlogs and stuff like that. But sometimes every now and then I provide tips that I've learned along the way that have helped me grow. And today is one of those videos. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how I set up my table as a vendor at pop-up shops. I've been doing quite a bit of them lately because more and more are happening in my area. So I try to hop on the opportunity to do them on the weekends when I can because they are so helpful for my business. So today I wanted to show you how I set up my table and also give some tips on what has helped me and what I've learned because every time I do a pop-up, I learn something new and I just wanted to share those tips that I've learned so far with you. I just wanted to say that the pop-ups that happen here in the Antelope Valley are on a much smaller scale than actual farmers markets or craft shows or exposed festivals or anything like that. So my experience and my tips are probably gonna be different. I don't know if other people do pop-up shops like the ones that they do here in other cities. They're usually at people's houses that people plan. And yes, they're open to the public and we um, advertise it a lot on social media and we usually get really good turnouts at everyone, but not as good as a farmer's market or craft show would be. So yeah, I think that now that everything is starting to open back up, I'm gonna have the opportunity to try a farmer's market or craft mar craft show someday soon. And I really want to, but these pop-ups have been really helpful because I have met a lot of local, local businesses. I get a lot more sales at pop-up shops than I do from online selling and it's much easier because I don't have to ship everything out. People just buy it and take it then and there. Yeah, I really, really love doing pop-up shops. My goal is to do at least one or two a month now because of how helpful they are in meeting people and just selling a bunch. So yeah, today I just wanted to show you how I set up everything for my shop. Um, all the products that I mentioned are going to be in the description. I hope that I get to cover everything today in this video, but if I don't and if you still have any more questions, then please feel free to comment your questions below or even message me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. So a few people have asked me how I find pop-up shops. My first pop-up shop was a few months ago in November. Back then there were only two people hosting pop-ups and now there are like 10, 15, 20 people hosting them. So there's one like every weekend. But back then, um, one of my small business friends invited me to the Desert Creatives one in the Antelope Valley. And um, I just messaged them. It was much easier because no one knew really about the pop-ups. All I had to do was message them. And then they said I was good to go. Um, it was free. There was no vendor fees back then but now there are which is understandable because it takes a lot of work to put these things together but the vendor fees aren't even that much like they would be for a farmer's market because i i remember looking at the poppy festival one which is one i wanted to do over there in lancaster and that vendor fee is 200 dollars but the vendor fees for these little pop-ups are around 25 to 50 dollars which is not bad at all you'll definitely get your money's worth and you'll sell and earn back what you paid for that for sure so after the desert creatives one i was just more open to meeting people locally i started slowly finding out about more pop-ups sometimes people would just send them to me or just being really active on instagram i feel like instagram is the place to be when you want to find events like that or if you want to market yourself so now i just know a bunch of people in the antelope valley i know a bunch of businesses here and now it's just easy really easy to find a pop-up every time i have a pop-up i always set up my table the day before or two to, a few days before to make sure that i have everything i need so the first item that you absolutely need is a table i bring one six foot table from costco that belongs to my dad but I haven't returned it yet because I have I've had a 
few pop-ups that I've done lately. So yeah, but um, I know some people use more than one table sometimes. And if I were to do a farmer's market or something like that, then I would definitely bring like three tables. <laughs> but sometimes you're limited on space if you're if the pop-up shop is in a house or in a backyard or inside a hookah lounge like my last one was i would definitely have not had space for two tables or even a canopy which is something i sometimes bring so yeah if they don't provide the space that you have to work with then i would ask so another item i think is crucial but it depends on how much space you have and what the weather is is a canopy um if you're selling candles and it's hot outside they will melt at my last last event it was hotter than i thought it would be i didn't even have a canopy and my boyfriend after we unloaded and stuff he went off to buy a canopy for that day because some of my candles were melting and they turned out really ugly and i didn't want to sell them yeah canopy when it's hot is really important for you and your candles because you'll probably want to stand in the shade and yeah you don't want your candles to melt um we got our canopy from big five i don't think i would be able to set it up alone so my boyfriend always comes with me so yeah i, don't, I think there are some canopies where you can set them up by yourself where it's easier to set up by yourself so i would probably look for that if you don't have help um, I know my boyfriend's not always going to come with me, so I should look for a canopy that I can set up on my own. But yeah, that one was from Big Five, but I'll look on Amazon to see if there are any um, canopies that you could set up by yourself. I also bring a foldable chair um, just in case. I don't really like to sit down during the pop-ups. I want to stand and always be available and not make it seem like I'm bored. One time I walked in to a pop-up shop and everybody was sitting down and I was just like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> it kind of looks like everybody's not having a good time. So I took that and I was like, I should probably stand the whole time, even when it's slow, um, even when there aren't really any customers, I just want to stand up. But I do use the chair to put my, um, my bag and my gift bags to be reachable and accessible and also my cash box. I basically use my chairs to set things on, I guess. Sometimes I sit if I'm really tired because after a few hours of standing, your feet, my feet really start to hurt. But for the most part, I stand, I do bring the chair just in case. Um, okay, and then there's the change box. So you have to be able to provide change. I use a change box. It has a lock on it and I keep the key with me at all times. I pretty much make sure that I have at least $100 in change in mostly ones, fives, tens, the smaller bills, and maybe a few twenties. Sometimes people give you bigger bills, so you just have to be prepared for that. And um, I do have a lot of coins in there. I keep pens in my cash box and a calculator and a receipt book. I've never had to use a receipt book at the pop-ups, but I just keep it there just in case somebody asks. Um, yeah, so it's easy for me to have the cash box around because my boyfriend usually comes with me and helps me with the pop-ups. And if one of us leaves, there's always somebody to keep an eye on it. Um, but if it was just me, and if you're by yourself, then I would probably just bring a fanny pack that you are wearing at all times, just in case you have to step away or something. Um, but yeah, a cash box is super helpful. You have to make sure that you have change for people that use cash. So at pop-ups, I accept cash, card, Venmo, and Zelle. And I make sure to have a sign that says that um, so that people know what kind of payments they can use so I'm gonna cover my phone number but this is my sign it's backwards because I'm using my phone to record like I said before but I got the QR code from Venmo you can find it in the app if you accept Venmo um, they can just scan this and it makes it easier instead of um, like you having to pull out your phone and show them and scan it every time. So Zelle doesn't have a QR code. I just put my phone number because I do it through Bank of America, but everybody has a different Zelle, I guess. So there's Zelle through um, different bank accounts. 
And then I also have a card reader. I take card, so I use Square. It accepts Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover card. Let me show you. All right, so by the way, this is the cash box. I make sure to put everything I need in here for the next pop-up so I don't forget. So I do have my card reader in here. This is what it looks like. So I got this from Etsy. Etsy will send you one for free because you can connect the square to your Etsy account and when you make sales, it'll synchronize with your sales and stuff like that. And you can also um, you can also sync the SKUs, the SKU numbers, and connect it to your inventory. I haven't done that because I'm too lazy, but <laughs> basically it um, sends the money to the Square app and then you can um, transfer it from there to your bank. But yeah, I'm using my phone so I can't connect it, but it connects on the bottom and then you just swipe the card and you can have the option for them to sign it and for them to receive a receipt or you could turn that off so that the transaction is quicker. I just put that in the cash box and make sure that it's in here so I don't forget it the next time. But like I said, here is the receipt book. I haven't had to use it. I have my business card holder in here just in case. And then I keep pens just in case and a little tiny calculator. Okay, so yeah, I make sure to have this sign with me to tell everybody that I accept card, cash, Venmo, and Zelle. And then, and I make sure that I bring change, enough change, at least $100 in change with mostly smaller bills. And then another sign that I always make sure to bring is my prices. So I, the supplies I bring are wax melts, car diffusers, the small jars, gold tins, and bigger mason jar candles. And I always make sure to put the prices on there so that people can see and they don't always have to ask me because I know it's kind of awkward for some people to ask for prices or some people just don't want to ask you what prices are of certain things. So. I make sure to put them on display. I used to have these little chalkboard chalkboards that I would write out the prices on, but I've done a few events where it was really windy and they weren't heavy enough to um, stay, stay, stay put. So I just ended up making the sign and, and then I don't have to write out the prices anymore on, it, on each individual chalkboard. So this makes it way easier. So yeah, so I got these sign holders from Amazon. So they're just these clear, signs that you put the paper in. I just print it on regular letter sized paper and then I stick it in here. This came with two, I think, or three. No, this came with three signs. And it also came with the little uh, business card holders. So it came with three of those, I think, or two. I think it came with two, but I also got that from Amazon. It'll be linked below. All right, and um, speaking of signs, you have to make sure that you have your business name displayed. I just use I just use this felt board that I display on my um, table. It comes with this little stand and it's really cute. And it comes with a bunch of letters, different letters where you could change this. I see some people put prices on here too. And that's really cute too. And I pro I'll probably do that um, once I get a bigger banner. Um, I do want to have a better display for my business name, like a banner or a wooden sign or something cute. And I haven't mentioned it before, but I do go for a, a rustic style. So I do go for a lot of wood displays and stuff like that. So yeah, make sure you have your business name on display. People that follow me on Instagram that live in the area come up to my table and they see my sign and they're like, hey, it's Green Valley Made. And then it's nice being recognized because they know the name. I know people put banners on their tables or up on top on their canopies. I've seen cute wooden cutouts displayed in the back, but it's like higher than them and those are really cute and i probably want to do something like that yeah so make sure you have your name out there advertise yourself advertise your business um i don't do it yet and i just thought of doing it but you should put your social media on too people can usually find me because my business name is exactly what it says green valley made on instagram and but i know some people's names are like abbreviated or they're are underscores or periods and it's not as easy to find as mine but 
yeah, people can usually find me and they usually, they do usually find me. I usually get a lot of followers on the day of pop-ups because people end up finding me on Instagram and following me, which is really cool. I always forget that that happens until it happens, <laughs> but yeah, put your social media on, put your Etsy on just in case somebody wants your Etsy as if you have an Etsy, but like your shop name or your website, just in case somebody wants to shop with you later or check back later. So yeah, I think I went through the main things. Um, now I'm gonna talk about my stands and my display items and containers and my decorations. So like I said, I go for a rustic theme. So one of the items I bought is this burlap runner. Um, it's too short for my table to go horizontally across the whole thing so I usually put it the other way this way and it's just on one end of the table but I thought I think it adds that nice rustic look to it and then I also have these these are placemats um, I bought these originally for a picnic that I was planning out on the porch for my friend because I wanted it to be cute and stuff and I used these but we don't have a dining table. We don't have a dining room. Our house is super tiny, but so I don't really have a place to use these. So I was like, hmm, I should just bring them to just add to the table. They also add a little bit of grip whenever I put anything on them, like one of these signs or something. So yeah, um, so yeah, I like these just to add extra things. Um, oh, I probably should have started off with the table cover. So um, it's spandex and I got it in black, but it comes in so many different colors and sizes. This is for the six foot table. So if you end up getting this, make sure you pay attention to the size, but I like it because it's spandex and it'll stretch all the way down to the feet of the table. So it'll look flush. Um, the very first time I did a pop-up, I used a plastic table cover and it was just flying around in the wind and looking all flimsy and stuff but this looks much more sleek and professional I guess I don't know yeah I just like how it doesn't move all over the place and it just sticks to the table um, so another tip that I have is to fill in all the, the empty space don't make it look too overcrowded but make sure that you don't have a lot of empty space um, I try to put something in every nook and cranny of my tables to make it look full to make it look like i have a lot of product to sell and to make it look like intentional i feel like when people just lay things out on the table without any decoration or display it seems like they didn't think about it too hard i don't know so i make sure to add layers so i've bought different stands which i'm going to show you right now but that's another tip that i have is to add layers and different heights so that everything is displayed at different levels because I feel like that makes it look more appealing to the eyes as well. Um, another flat, another thing that just lays on the table um, is this wooden plate thing. I used this for the first time last time and I love it. It's so cute. I got this from a store that's like Michael's, but it's not Michael's. It's like a sister store of it, but yeah, I got it from there. Definitely adds to the rustic theme. Um, I had my diffusers on here, my tester diffusers, so um, people were able to just pick them up and smell them, but I had it in the front, displayed in the front. So this is my main display. Um, I put it right in the center and work everything else around it. This gives my table a good amount of height and it holds a good amount of candles. So yeah, I also got this from Amazon. So for my car diffusers, I use this jewelry holder. I think it also came in white on Amazon. It's kind of broken and um, my boyfriend had to... It comes with a tool to put it together and I did put it together, but it was all loose and stuff. But then my boyfriend just took his drill and he fixed it and made it tighter. So that could be an issue if you get this from Amazon. But yeah, I basically use this for my car diffusers to hang and I like it again because it's tall. This is supposed to get taller and adjust and tighten, but it doesn't, so that's lame. Even though it was broken at first, my boyfriend fixed it and now it's pretty good for a display for my diffusers. So this one I got from the $5 or the dollar section at Target. Um, it was $5, but I use it to put my matches on sometimes or sometimes if I don't bring matches, I put candles on it as well. I think it's cute. I liked the black 
and the wood on it. Um, and then for my wax melts, I use these, I use two of these containers. Um, I forgot what they're actually for, but I feel like they fit my wax melts really well and perfectly. Um, I could probably find something that fit more wax melts because usually I have way more wax melts than this and they're just, and then I just like spread them around this just to put them on display more and since they don't all fit in here. So maybe one day I'm gonna look for a bigger container for my wax melts, but for now these work and I think they fit pretty good. So the final touches I put are these, is this fake greenery. If you've seen my um, sh candle shed makeover, this is what I had at the top, but I, I mentioned that sometimes I take it down for pop-ups, but this one kind of permanently, permanently stays down because they always fall all the time from the shed anyway. So I just put it on my table and I think the touch of green makes it look so nice and it adds to the natural look that I'm going for even though this is fake, but it does add to the rustic natural look that I like and also from Amazon. But look, and you could probably make a wreath out of it. Cute. <laughs> and then I did this for the first time the other day too, but I added these sunflowers all around. It's spring right now, so I thought these would be cute. Plus I do have a sunflower candle right now, so those went perfectly with it. And um, that was another thing I wanted to mention that um, the decorations, the random decorations like these or sometimes people put little fake plants. Um, I think that makes the table stand out more. Even during the holidays like Valentine's Day or Christmas or something, you could put a little Christmas tree or some hearts or extra, just extra things to add to your table to give it a little pizzazz. So. Yeah, I think that decorations are also a good idea. Um, I also make sure to have hand sanitizer, um, not just for me, but for everybody passing by or who comes to my table. I also make sure to bring baby wipes just to wipe things right, just to wipe things down sometimes. Another big thing that I should have also started off with was to bring business cards. Um, I throw in a business card every time someone buys from me. Oh, every I throw a business card in the bag every time someone purchases from my table. But if someone doesn't decide to buy, then I give it to them anyways, or most of the time they grab it themselves because I just put it on display in the very front for them to grab. Um, so yeah, business cards, make sure you have business cards so that people can contact you later, find you later. So I put my website on there, my social media, um, what I sell, and on the back is also my care card. So that's two in one. I designed these on Canva and I had them printed through Avery. I used to print my business cards at home and they just didn't come out nice. They would be uh, not in alignment with the paper, the business card paper that I had. So I was just like, F it, I'll just upload it to Avery and then just order it. And yeah, these come out much better. They look more professional. <laughs> Another thing that you must bring are um, bags. So I have small craft bags for the smaller purchases. And then I also have big gift bags. I love these ones. They're more, they're much more fancy. So when people buy a lot or some of my bigger items, I just use this. Um, these are also from Amazon. And yeah, sometimes I um, will stamp my logo on here, but I didn't get to do this this time. So so shopping bags really help. Um, I always ask people if they even want a bag and usually they will say yeah, because sometimes they want to use it for when they shop for other people as well. I hate when people don't have shopping bags because I just don't want to carry my stuff around, especially if it's a big item, if, especially if I'm going to walk around and shop some more. I don't just want to carry and lug things around with me. So shopping bags help a bunch. Oh, another tip that I forgot to mention is to make sure to bring water and snacks. If there are food vendors there, it's, it would be cool to support them while you're there and buy food there, but make sure you bring your own water just in case. Sorry if that was all over the place. I was just trying to get all the information out of my brain <laughs> while it was in there, but yeah.
I just wanted to mention also that I do have a pop-up shop checklist that is available for digital download on my other Etsy shop. Um, it's getyourshittogether.etsy.com, but I have this pop-up shop. It's only $2 if you want to download this checklist. Um, you can download it once and then print it as many times as you want at home. Um, but it basically has the basics of what you will need for a pop-up shop. I thought this would be helpful for people since I know a lot of people that do pop-up shops and just decided to bring it up here on this YouTube channel since I'm talking about um, my setup and all that. So yeah, here is a checklist that you can purchase. It's only $2. Um, I'm going to include it in my description if you want to buy that. So yeah, I'm trying to grow this Etsy shop as well. So if you do purchase it, that would help me a bunch or if you favorite the um, Etsy that helps me too so yeah I hope um, that the checklist is helpful for you if you do decide to buy it but yeah it's um, available to print in letter size so 8.5 by 11 and yeah only two dollars guys so there it is all right so those are all the tips that I have and I hope it was helpful like I said if you have any more questions you can comment them down below or you can message me directly on Instagram and I would be more than happy to help you out or answer any more questions that you have. Um, if you are if you have a pop-up coming up and you're nervous, don't be, you're gonna do great. And who knows, you're probably gonna fall in love with it like I did because they're so fun. You get to meet so many people and you get to connect with so many small businesses and new customers, old customers, all of that. And don't worry, you're gonna learn you're gonna learn as you go. I'm still learning, but this is what I know so far and these tips have helped me. So I hope they help you too. So, so yeah, thank you for watching and see you on the next video.